Hello, welcome, we're live. It's me, Phil Morse, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another free Tuesday Tips live lesson. This is the slot where Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school, gives you something completely for free. Now, we're well known for our book, Rock the Dance Floor, the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. We're also well known, of course, for the Digital DJ Tips website. That's not the website, that is though. Uh, and we're also, of course, on the channels that you're watching us on now, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. So wherever you are, welcome. It's good to hear, to be here with you today uh, and to be able to give you this free lesson. And the free lesson today is all about 10 mistakes that DJs make the pro DJs don't. Beginner DJs make these mistakes over and over again. We've seen it in the school over the years. We've taught 27,000 people to DJ since 2010. And these are the ones we see coming up again and again and again. So if you are new to DJing and you want to avoid the kind of errors that I've made and that the team here have made and we see people make you know, over and over again, well then in the next half hour or so, I will be sharing all those with you. Now this is a live show, you're probably watching the recording because most people do get to see this on a recording, but that's cool, you can still ask questions underneath whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook and we will get to you and help you with that. But look, the best way to know when we're going live is to subscribe to the channel. So do do that uh, on Facebook, like the page and show posts first. On YouTube, just click the subscribe button. Even better than subscribing to the channel though is because becoming a Digital DJ Tips member by going to djtips.co slash join. That's a bit flickery, isn't it? Uh, by going to djtips.co slash join, uh, we can let you know by email when we do anything new, whether it's videos or training or offers uh, and so on. It's completely free and you get a free copy of the book just for joining. So do head there, djtips.co slash join. If you do one thing after this video, that is the thing. Right, so loads and loads of people. I'm just checking the chat. We've got a chat camera over there, uh, which I will get to afterwards. So if you're saying hello, if you are uh, wanting to ask questions, uh, use the hashtag ask, hashtag ASK, uh, to ask questions about this. But uh, whether you're just saying hello or you've got a question, I'll get to you afterwards because I want to get to the meat and bones. I want to get to the value straight up front here today. All right, so this 10 beginner mistakes that you don't see pros making lesson is based upon uh, a article that did really, really well on Digital DJ Tips recently. So you don't need to start making notes or anything like that. Just head over to Digital DJ Tips and find the 10 mistakes beginner DJs make that pros don't article. Uh, and everything I talk about here today is in this article. So let's look through them together then. So number one, 10 beginner mistakes that pro DJs don't is play bangers at 9 p.m. Play bangers at 9 p.m. So what do I mean by this? Well, it's being given the warm-up slot and using it to show off your skills by just smashing the hell out of the gear and playing all those massive tunes that really you should be leaving for the person who's going to be playing peak time. Now you might think, hey, this is my only chance to show off my skills, so I'm going to just go for it, but that is not the way to deal with it. It's not the way to deal with that slot. Uh, this it, camera keeps flickering. If it carries on doing it, I'll switch to the other one. Um, but uh, that's not the way to deal with that slot. Uh, the way to deal with that slot is to play stuff which will complement what's going to happen later. Play stuff which is the kind of thing you'd want to hear upon arriving at a venue. Stuff that will calm people down, that will make people feel relaxed, they're in the right place. Slowly get people's feet tapping, keep the volume a bit lower. The energy level should be about half to two thirds, not full on. And of course, the, the DJs who are going to be playing later on in the venue would appreciate you leaving the big tunes for them because that's their job. And if you think about it, when you're playing the peak time slots, which hopefully won't be too far away, you'd expect the warm-up DJs to do that for you as well. Now, the thing here is that you've got to play the longer game here for two reasons. Reason number one, it's a small world. So if you do a good job at warm-ups, it will be noticed. And the, the promoters and the other DJs and the punters, everyone will realise that this DJ knows his or her stuff and they're doing a good job of the warm-up and that will get noticed. Uh, but number two is um, that... Well, I really, I covered it all in number one. You're going to get noticed. It's a small world. I was going to say number two is like, you know, you'd want people to do, to do that for you, so do it for them. But that kind of all feeds into the small world bit. Uh, learning to, do, to play proper warm-ups is one of the key skills of DJing, and it's one of the obvious things that marks out rookies from people who figured this out. So 
don't play bangers at 9, 9 p.m. or, you know, whenever the, the night's beginning, whenever the, the club opens and you've got that early booking. But I guess it also goes for if you're playing the whole event. Let's say you've been booked to play a bar and you're playing from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. You know, pace yourself. Save the, the, the more banging music till later on. Don't, don't kind of like do it too soon. Okay, so we're doing 10 mistakes beginner DJs make that pros don't. Number two uh, on our list, and as I say, you can see this whole lot over on the Digital DJ Tips website. Number two is overuse filters and effects. Overuse filters and effects. You know, these things uh, on modern DJ gear are absolutely brilliant. Uh, modern DJ gear has got so much that's good on it. I mean, this has got effects here, sound color effects that you can use with these knobs here. It's got a fuller set effects section down here. And whatever DJ gear you walk up to nowadays, it's gonna have stacks and stacks of this stuff on it. Filters, echoes, noise effects, sweeps, uh, transform effects, reverbs, delays, phases, uh, slip rolls, all this kind of stuff. And that is awesome, that's really cool. But it doesn't mean you've got to use it. Now, if you can remember, some of you will be old enough to remember, when word processors, you know, Microsoft Word first appeared, and suddenly we had printers that could actually print um, all these amazing fonts that were now available. You know, people used to have typewriters, and then the early computers had dot matrix printers, which were, um, which didn't really look good on paper. You know, they could give you a printout. They still use them for receipts on tills and that kind of thing. But then suddenly we had like laser printers uh, and then inkjet printers, and we had software that had like 200 fonts in it, right? So people would use every typeface going on a poster. You'd get a poster for an event and it had every typeface you could imagine on it. And it looked bloody horrible, right? Because the truth is one or two fonts is enough to make a poster look nice or to make a document look nice. And people soon learn that less is more. And it's exactly the same with effects. Effects should complement what's going on in the music or accentuate what's going on in the music. So let's say you're playing house music and it's got a lot of filter effects. Things arriving on the filters and leaving on the filters. It's probably a good idea if you're gonna use effects to use the filters because it's complementing what's already in the tracks that you're playing. Now, accentuating what's already there, let's say there's a big breakdown and it's got a filter on it, you can use your filter to make it even more kind of filtery. That's okay, that's what's expected, it's what sounds good with the music you're playing. But if you're piling in foghorns and all this kind of stuff that doesn't really appear in that kind of music, then it's gonna annoy people. Now, if you're playing a really rough hip hop set, then it's probably a better place to use foghorns and spin back effects and so on. So pick stuff that complements and accentuates what's already there. And less is more when it comes to effects. You know, pro DJs use effects far less than you might think. So um, don't overuse your effects. That's the second mistake we see DJs making. If you wanna talk about these, Talk about it in the comments, I'll get to you afterwards. It's all about you guys and girls today, but I wanna get through the 10 before we go there. So the third mistake that we see DJs making over and over again is clashing vocals with vocals. Uh, and that little uh, graphic we've got there is illustrating a DJ getting a little bit annoyed at the uh, horrible vocal clash. So look, the thing with music is, when you're mixing music, you can pretty much, and I'm gonna cut things down to the chase here, you can pretty much get away with mixing anything over anything, as long as you don't mix vocals over vocals. Now, some stuff will sound better and worse, like for instance, you don't wanna clash musical keys, so that's another pretty no-go area, but you really have lost the battle when you're putting a full vocal over a full vocal, and the reason's very simple. When you're dancing to music, you're hearing the drums, you're hearing the bass, you're hearing the synthesizers, you're hearing the pads, you're hearing the melodies, you're hearing the chords, but your brain isn't needed for that. It, 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 it bypasses your brain, it makes you feel good, it makes your body feel good. That's what music does. Music is a language that doesn't need your brain to understand it, right? But vocals are different. Vocals have actually got content which in order to understand what the vocals are saying, you need to engage your brain. So it's almost like the vocalist is talking to you and to talk to someone, they need to listen and that involves effort. Now imagine two people talking to you at the same time. I've got two kids, right? If you've got kids, you probably find yourself saying over and over again, stop talking one at a time because it's completely impossible for the human brain to listen to two conversations at once. We can only concentrate effortfully on one thing at a time. So if you play two vocals at once in a DJ set, people will not be able to concentrate on both of them and that is a bad thing and that will make you look bad as a DJ. So if we um, tell you this over and over again, we do it for a reason because it's the biggest 
error when it comes to transitioning between tracks that we see DJ, DJs make, whether deliberately or just not realizing um, uh, they put vocal over vocal and it doesn't work. The only time it can work is if one of the vocals is really thrown back deep in the mix, so it's basically drowned by the other one, or it's a voice being used as an instrument. You know, if a voice is being used as an instrument, well, that's different because you don't have to think about it. Uh, but otherwise, avoid vocals over vocals like the plague. So our fourth big mistake that DJs make at the beginning of their careers that they don't make later on is boast about having a huge music collection. Look, I get it. We're all collectors of music. We all love our music. But when you're a DJ, every single record, every single track in your collection has got to do a job. Otherwise, it shouldn't be in your collection. If you pack your collection with music that you might listen to one day, or hey, I love that producer, or I love that band, so therefore I'm gonna get everything they've ever done in my collection, because that's what DJs do. You're missing the point entirely. You should have a small number of tunes that you know very, very well, and that you can DJ with, because you know them very well. And if those tunes are no longer featuring in your DJ sets, you should take them out of your collection so that there's room for new ones. Because in a, a very, very real sense, if you don't know the tunes that you're DJing with and you can't comfortably mix with them, they shouldn't be in your DJ set. Another way of, or in your collection, another way of talking about this is, imagine a, you know, a, a plumber or a carpenter or an electrician turns up to do some work at your house. Everything they've got in that toolbox is a tool that they need and that they know how to use. Now they might not use them all in your house or for the job you've given them, but they've got them with them just in case. And that's the same with your music. Everything in your DJ collection should be something that you might need. And if you aren't ever gonna need it, why the hell have you got it there? So less is more when it comes to your music. And DJs who say, oh, I've got 15 terabytes of music. Aren't I a great DJ? I'll tell you what, they're they either beginners or they've never moved past that beginner mentality. So number five, DJing with levels in the red. If there's one thing that marks out beginner DJs more than most, it's DJing with levels in the red. And the reason for this is quite clear. It will make you sound bad. If your levels are pushed up into the red on your channels, so look, on this DJ gear here, we've got the individual channels here. These are controlled by the trim control at the top. The input here is gonna affect how high or low this is here. And this should be set always so that this isn't in the red. And then you've got your master outputs here. So you should make sure that you are never pushing this into the red either. And then if you're doing those two things, if you're in charge of the PA system as well, say you're a mobile DJ, make sure the PA system's not um, peaking as well. Maybe not that it's got a, a single LED that, that goes red when it's peaking or it's got an actual meter on like this. Or if you're plugged into a club mixer, make sure that club mixer isn't in the red uh, or if you're working with a sound engineer, the sound engineer will make sure that the, the, the club's gear isn't in the red as well. But if you're pushing your stuff into the red, it doesn't matter what happens after your gear, there's a big chance it's gonna sound distorted. Now it won't always, but it certainly won't sound distorted if you're keeping it out of the red. Someone in the comments on the article said, but Skrillex always DJs in the red and he's all right. But the thing is, a lot of DJ gear nowadays is very forgiving. You can push it a bit harder than you should and you might get away with it, but look, Distortion doesn't sound nice on modern DJ gear. It's not like on tape and on record where a bit of distortion can even sound good. It crackles. It sounds absolutely non-musical. So, and, and that happening just once in a set is enough to mark you out as a complete amateur. So just don't do it. Just keep your levels out of the red. It's easy to say in the heat of the moment, it's sometimes hard to do, but look, that is something that's, that's, that's unforgivable when it happens. So don't do it. Don't play in the red. Right, people, we are talking here today about five. We've done five. There's five more to come. So 10 in total, beginner mistakes, that pro DJs simply don't make. Uh, and I've got loads and loads of people over here on the chat cam uh, really dying to join in with the conversation here today. Uh, and so hello to all of you. I'll just name check a few of you now at the halfway point. Hi to Mark, hi to Steamsy in Wales and Kevin and Rob and Plastic76 in Florida, DJ Lifer. Uh, hello to Steve, hello to Razor, uh, BCF Madara. Uh, hi to Robert there, who's in a surprisingly sunny Netherlands. Hello to Ian in Staffordshire in the UK. 
today. And Techno Beats back with us. Always good to have you here. Mixmaster G, uh, DJ Steamzy on Twitch. Loads and loads and loads of people. I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd name check a few of you. Uh, Christian uh, and uh, to Salvation, Drum and Bass says hi, chat crew. Uh, it's good to have so many of you here. Good to have so many regulars here. Hello, Lou. Hello, Stan. Uh, and I'll get to all the great questions and the great points you're making about these beginner DJ errors very soon. I want to go back to the, uh, to the, to the studio and cover off the other five now. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to name check a few of you at this kind of halfway point in the lesson. Uh, we'll come back to you in a little while. So, okay, so let's go back now to our sixth point, uh, which is, uh, it's a mistake that you see a lot of beginner DJs making, is sticking to a predetermined playlist. And by the way, if you have joined us late, we're, we're talking through an article on Digital DJ Tips. You can go and look at all of these afterwards on the website, digitaldjtips.com. So one big beginner mistake, sticking to a predetermined playlist. Look, I get it. My first public mixing DJ gig, because I played DJing a lot when I was a teenager with like old fashioned decks and seven inch singles, and we weren't really mixing, we were using the mic and all that. Um, but when I you know, got into club music in my early 20s and I got my first real gig, uh, it was using records, it was in a bar ra literally round the corner in the same building as the Hacienda Club in Manchester, uh, but it was round the corner and underneath in a basement bar. It was called Testarossa the night, uh, and I had vinyl. And I turned up at the club with my box of records uh, and I was shaking that much that I had the classic couldn't get the needle on the record. You know, I had to kind of like hold my own hand to try and put the needle on the record and, and, and cure it up and stuff. But... Um, one thing I did do was have my whole set planned out on a piece of paper, track after track after track, mixing points and everything, which I had balanced on my record box underneath the DJ console so no one could see it. And I was literally mixing one record in, looking down, looking at the next one. It said, you know, at the end of the chorus, mix this in from the first beat and stuff. Uh, and, and, and the whole set was pre-planned, the whole set. And I understand pre-planning your sets, but ultimately this is not what DJing is about. Ultimately, de ultimately, DJing is about an interplay between crowd and DJ and looking at the crowd and saying, what would I want to hear next if I was them? And playing that track. And that's going to change throughout the night. So sticking to a predetermined set is a real mark of a beginner DJ. And you may have to do it once or twice just to get, you know, just to break your dark and get yourself not so nervous behind those decks. But as soon as possible, stop playing predetermined sets. Now on live streams, Fine, I always have a predetermined set on my DJ live streams because I can't see a crowd. There's no crowd there. So I've decided what order I should play the tunes in that I want to play. I've figured it out uh, and I'll stick to it. And that's fine. I've got too much else to do anyway, keeping the live stream live and handling the cameras and saying hello to people and stuff. But look, when you're DJing with a real crowd, your job is to react to the crowd. So do it. React to the crowd. Don't play a predetermined set. Uh, so number seven um, uh, mistake DJs make is they don't mix. So... This is all about realizing something that has happened in recent years, which is, look, you could always get DJ friendly versions of songs, always. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, all through the 90s actually, in the UK, you could join something called DMC. And DMC for a fee would send you a 12 inch or two 12 inches or whatever you subscribe to every month that had DJ mixes, DJ versions, and they could be Two songs mashed up, there could be a special DJ friendly version of something. Look, now you just join you just join a DJ pool, right? You join DJ City or BPM Supreme or Zip DJ, and you can download for like your 30 euros or 30 dollars, 30 pounds a month, infinite versions of songs that are easy to DJ mix with. They've got intro and outro beats. There could be even two or three songs mashed up and mixed together. So there's all these versions of songs which are, they sound like a DJ has, has done something to them already. And what you find a lot of beginner DJs doing now is thinking, ah, oh, aren't I clever? I've discovered these special DJ versions of songs. I've discovered the mashup websites. I've discovered where to get remixes. No one else can get these. You don't hear these on the radio. These are special. That makes me special. I'll download them all and I'll just play them one after the other. And again, look, I get it. It's great to play a set that sounds like you're getting music that other people can't get, versions other people can't get, but a lot of new DJs use that as a replacement for mixing. So they'll be DJing and they'll literally be going from one track, it's playing over here, it's playing over here, it's doing all its clever stuff, it sounds like there's a DJ doing something, they might even be pretending to DJ, and then they'll go one, two, three, four, bang, 
into the next one and that's the end of it that's the end of what they do uh, and they'll do that track after track after track now it will fall a few of the people some of the time but it won't fall everyone all the time and in the end you'll realize that you're not really doing the right job and more importantly other people will realize that you do need to think about blending your tracks together in a way that says more about the tracks than just playing them one after the other. Smooth transitions, a bit of, um, you know, an acapella on this track over an instrumental on this track, or at least mixing the tracks so that the music on that one stops when the music on that one starts, but they blend together beat-wise for a little while to just give that smoothness. It's something that you'll get in the end, and it's something that'll get easier as you learn how to use the controls. There's nothing wrong with using sync, there's nothing wrong with using cue points to help you see where to mix into tracks and so on, but try and mix at least a bit at the beginning, even if you've got your hands on all these versions of songs that are kind of suggesting to you that you don't have to, you do have to. However, on the flip side of that, uh, number eight is mix too much. Um, so this is, this is really all about realizing that you can beat mix, realizing that you figured out how to get from track to track smoothly with the beats lined up and doing it on every single transition. Why is that bad? Well, two reasons. Number one, it encourages you to play a track next and a track next and a track next that you know will mix into the track you're currently playing. In other words, choosing the next track on the basis that you can mix it by doing a beat mix rather than on the basis that it's the right tune for the people out there right now, which as we've talked about already is the job of a DJ. If you choose the right song to play next, it is better to then say, how am I gonna mix this in? Am I gonna spin this one back and drop it? I'm gonna put a big reverb on here and drop it. I'm gonna put some effects on there. Can I beat mix it? Can I slow the tempo down and then mix it in? Can I sync them together and slow them down together and then mix it in? Can I use some echo? Can I mix in on a cue point on this one that I've got looped and then when I've mixed in? You know, there's a million ways you can get from track to track and we've got whole courses that teach it. But the point is, if you're mixing too much, you're possibly ignoring the fact that um, you, the, the right tune to play next should be what you're doing. You should be thinking what's the right one to play next and then sometimes you might mix them, sometimes you, you might not. A lot of DJs nowadays are very happy to slam from one track to another where it counts uh, and then to mix the tracks where it makes more sense and I think that's probably the best way forward. Um, even some of the biggest DJs will be happy to do, you know, a four bar blend or whatever but the next track is always right. There's a DJ that I um, respected who I won't name out of respect for him um, uh, back in the day, uh, who wasn't a very good mixer, really wasn't. Um, his mixes, there you go, there's 50% of uh, the, pop the world's population ruled out because it was a man. Uh, his mixes used to be very much a very slow mix. Uh, you know, I say slow, but he just do a blend over a few seconds from one track to another. The beats might be a bit out, they might be a bit off, but by the time his crossfader hit the, the new track, something happened in the track that made the dance floor feel good. In other words, he was mixing in at the right time and the song he'd chosen was the right song as well. So having slightly ropey DJ skills, and by the way, we were talking back on the days of vinyl, it, we let him off. We let him off week after week, month after month, year after year, because he knew his music and he was a great DJ in programming music. So look, trying to mix everything and then choosing songs based on that is a beginner error Try not to do that. Pick the right song and then figure out how you're going to mix it. Even if the mixes aren't the best, it's better than, uh, it's better than choosing songs that are just boring, but that you know you can blend between them. I won't go on any more about this one. You see a lot of it out there. Right, so number nine uh, is playing YouTube rips. People just don't play YouTube rips. And the reason why, apart from the fact that ethically it's very, very shady, is that they sound horrible. To start with, the uh, quality of the stuff uploaded to YouTube is something you've got no control over. And secondly, when you download it after YouTube has done its stuff with the compression and after your browser has chosen which version out of the limited numbers of audio qualities that might be available to you, you're gonna hear, or your Ripper software is gonna hear, you end up with a track that's gonna sound a lot worse than the original version. So don't rip from YouTube. You know, there's cost-effective ways of getting tracks nowadays. That, you know, at the most, you pay 99 cents a track. Join a download pool and get pristine versions from there, but don't play YouTube rips. You can hear that they're YouTube rips. Pro DJs will not do that stuff. If you wanna be a pro DJ, start acting like one and don't play them. Uh, and the final mistake beginner DJs make that the pros don't, well, it 
kind of makes sense because it's in the word pro, is play for free. No pro DJ is going to play a gig for free. You might say, well, they play charity gigs. They get their expenses covered. I'll tell you that for certain. They're not buying their drinks. No pro DJ will ever play for free and you shouldn't play for free either. Now you may say, you might say, hey, but I love DJ. I'd pay to, I'd pay to DJ. It doesn't matter. You know, it's like pilots will pay to fly planes if they could, but you know, no one wants a plane that's flown by someone who's paid to, to, to fly it. So you don't, you don't want to be a passenger on a plane like that. You don't want to be on a dance floor where the DJ is playing for free or is actually paid for the privilege. Not that that happens, but I'm sure it does in other ways. If you've paid to get there, if you've paid petrol or diesel or whatever, however you got there, uh, you're paying for your drinks. In effect, you're paying to play. No one wants that because that kind of DJ is not getting paid money and therefore is not doing as serious a job as someone who's been paid. Now you might say, as I said at the beginning, oh, but I'll, I'll play for exposure. In the end, people will pay me. It's very, start, very hard to start charging for gigs if you've been doing them for free in the meantime. Look, I understand you want to play, but it's the mindset. So what you should say to people is, say someone's going to offer you a gig uh, or you've, you've pestered for a gig and then you're like, okay, well, let's talk about fee. Um, I'm unproven. You don't know that I can do a great job. I do, but you don't. So here's the deal. My usual fee is $200. I will play this gig we've just agreed to for $1. And if you like it, next time my fee is $200. Um, if you don't like it or you don't want to pay that kind of money, great, nothing lost. But let's do it. Let's do this one gig for a dollar, right? And you go and find that person and make sure you get paid your dollar. Smile about it, joke about it, but get that dollar. I'll tell you what happens. It shows them that you're serious. Um, and they know that you're going to be 200 next time. But also, I'll tell you one thing, marching up and asking for that dollar is going to feel like marching up and asking for any DJ fee. When, let me tell you a story about Digital DJ Tips. When Digital DJ Tips started, we weren't actually a DJ school. We were a, a website. This, the website that you see uh, is, um, is all we were. We had this website here called Digital DJ Tips. It didn't look quite as nice as it looks now, but it existed and it was called Digital DJ Tips. Now down here on the website, where this little scratching for controller DJs advert, see a scratch advert there, I moved it to the top right now. Um, that's for one of our courses, that little advert. But that advert, along with all the other advertising slots on the website, were up for sale because that's how we made our money. We sold advertising. We didn't have any courses. We sold adverts to Pioneer and Stanton at the time. Stanton were a big company. Um, to, I'm trying to think of the other earlier ones that we sold to, Tractor and people like that. But right at the beginning of selling adverts, I sold an advert to a, a, a web developer or a, a, an app developer in New Zealand who had this little app that kind of let you mix songs together and make mixtapes. And I sold that advert for $40. Selling that advert for $40 on Digital DJ Tips sits with me as one of the most uh, memorable moments in the whole 11 year existence of our company. And we're now, of course, <laughs> the biggest DJ school anywhere. We work with Jazzy Jeff and James Hype and Layback Luke and we've got, you know, we've got a full-time team all over the world. But back then it was just me sat there with my computer. And when I got another person, another company to pay us $40 for an advert, I knew we were in business. I knew that we had a viable idea and I knew this was going to work. And it's the same with you with your DJing. As soon as you charge anything at all to someone else for you to deliver the service, Something will change in your thinking and you'll realize that you're doing this for real. So please don't play for free. Please always charge something. Okay, that is the end of the 10 beginner mistakes that we see beginners making all the time that pros don't. As I said, you can find this on the Digital DJ Tips. I've got to stop showing you that, uh, that incorrect screenshot. Uh, you can find it on Digital DJ Tips. Head over to Digital DJ Tips, scroll down, and you'll find this, um, this exclamation mark in a warning triangle. Click on that, uh, and you'll go to the article. So you can go to the article there and revise these. You can comment there as well if you want to come and join in on the conversation. But now is your chance to join in on the conversation live with me because it's comment cam time. And for the next 20 minutes or so, because I know there'll be lots of comments, uh, I want to share with you uh, and with the audience, what you guys and girls are talking about. Have you enjoyed this today? Has that been good fun for you? Have you, have you been thinking uh, in a way that you weren't before? That's what this is all about. So do hit those likes and uh, hit those thumbs ups and wherever you are, hit whatever that button is. Let us know that we're doing a good enough job of this. So 
These are all random uh, and uh, I'm going to filter by hashtag ask now. So if you didn't hashtag ask uh, what you uh, had to say, um, uh, it won't be read out in this section, but I will go and read it out in a minute because I just want to cover the, co the questions that you've asked about what I just talked about. Um, so we'll get those questions covered off quickly now uh, and then we will move to um, your general comments about this stuff. Uh, so Rob says, what good download pools are recommended? Well, the ones I always recommend are DJ City, BPM Supreme, Zip DJ and Promo Only. DJ City, BPM Supreme, Zip DJ and Promo Only. They're only four. There's loads more good download pools out there, but they're a good place to start. Um, Sergio uh, says, um, when you play at private events or weddings where there are guests from 10 to 99 and the organizer asks you to please all the guests and play a little for each group, what's your favorite transition to move from one star to another? A simple cut, simple count the beats, one, two, three, four, cut. Uh, to a new track is uh, an easy transition. Um, actually, in the book, in I'll grab the book and explain to you. So you can get a free copy of this, our, our best-selling book on how to DJ. You can get a free copy of this by going there, djtips.co slash join. We give it to you when you join Digital DJ Tips. Uh, in the book, we talk about uh, the, the six, um, I think there's five actually, transitions that will basically, um, yeah, there's five. Five DJ transitions that you can use for pretty much everything. Uh, and they're all in the book, but also there's a link to a video where I actually, I actually talk you through the transitions. So if you wanna see me talking through the basic DJ transitions that every DJ can use like 80% of the time or 100% of the time if you want, uh, there's a video of them all in the book. So. Go get it. Join, join us and, uh, and grab a copy of this and uh, go, go look at those videos and you'll see them there. Uh, so the next question we had in ahead of time, um, this is from uh, Alexis who says, if the levels are in the red, uh, then you keep it at a normal level so it doesn't sound distorted. Yes, exactly. If the levels are in the red, just turn them down a little bit. It's all right if they're flicking every now and then towards those non-green lights on your controller, but not all the time. Um, and uh, Reza says, how do you recommend getting better at the art of programming sets, i.e. what songs to play? Again, look, go grab the book because I talk, it all starts with packing, well, it starts with buying your music, right? It starts with buying a good selection of music that will suit everywhere you might want to play. You know, a good mix of old and new, underground and commercial, vocal and instrumental, hard hitting uh, and light and, and airy. You know, have you got enough contrast in your music collection to handle all kinds of gigs? That's the first thing. But the second thing is packing the music for the gig. You know, you should take about twice the amount of music you need so that you've got enough music to go off on tangents and, you know, you're gonna go home having not played half of that music, right? But to pack a set of twice the amount of music you need, so say you're playing for an hour and you're gonna play 20 songs, take 40. To, to pack a set, to think about what 40 songs you're gonna put in a playlist to play from, uh, is part of the homework you're gonna do, part of the pre-reading of the crowd. That means when you get there, you've already thought about what might happen and what you might wanna play and, and what's gonna be useful for you on that gig. So that's how you appear to be the DJ who's just always knowing what to play next, because you've not only bought well, but you've, um, thought about what you might need to play at this particular gig. Uh, and so you've, you've kind of like gone from your whole collection down to about twice the amount of tunes. Now, obviously on a digital DJ setup, you've got all your music there anyway, but you should play from a playlist and not from a library. So that's a better way of, of thinking about programming Reza. Do a lot of the work ahead of time. Uh, Mikel says, is it okay if you ask for a meal and drinks as a payment? Absolutely. I played a gig, there's a beach bar um, down in my town um, in um, up the coast here. There's a lovely town, lovely beach, and a lovely beach bar. I go there anyway. I took my family there on Sunday. It's a lovely, lovely place. It's run by lovely people. And um, and, and I always thought, oh, I'd love to DJ here sometimes. So I said to them once, you know, would it be all right to DJ here? I think, you know, it's just such a nice place to play music. And they were like, well, yeah, we haven't got a budget for a DJ or anything, but... Um, but yeah, um, it'd be good, good, good to have someone playing some tunes here sometimes. I said, well, how about you, you, you um, I did the usual thing. Let me come and show you what I can do. Uh, and if you like it, um, we'll talk about a fee. Uh, and they're like, okay, well, as I said, there's no fee. And I said, yeah, okay, but as I said, if you like it, we'll talk about something, smiling. Um, and then I played the gig and they did like it. And I said, well, look, why don't we do this? Why don't me and my family come down on a Sunday afternoon? Um, 
you give us some, you feed us all, you give us a meal, you look after us, and then after, I'll DJ for you till sunset. And they were like, yeah, that could work. So, you know, that's how, that's what happened. We ended up going down there, we ended up spending a couple of hundred, whatever, uh, on, a, on a lovely meal for us, and we all stayed there all afternoon. It didn't cost them that, it cost them not very much, you know, uh, and they got a, a DJ and it worked out, you know, the, the, the punters liked it. I remember one time, because it's a, a beach bar, right? I remember one time there was a yacht moored out at sea and we had speakers on the beach and I'm playing and this, this multi-millionaire dude dived off his yacht, swam to the shore, came up to the DJ booth. He says, uh, mate, I just want to say we're really enjoying your set on the boat over there. Keep it up. And then he swam back. <laughs> so... You can't make up moments like that, can you? So yeah, you know, it's absolutely fine to be paid in um, in kind, if you like, um, because sometimes that's the way it is and that, that's going to work for you. Um, all right then. So um, I'm now going to switch to your comments rather than your questions. So there's going to be a lot more comments and questions, of course, about today. And any more questions, please do ask them or ask away uh, and we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to them. Uh, so this is from... Uh, this, and by the way, if you're, asking, if you're asking questions or you've got comments that aren't related to this, come back on Thursday. It's on Thursdays when you uh, can ask anything. Uh, so, uh, you don't like my music, says, if you're DJing on a yacht, you've made it. James Hype, uh, our tutor, is DJing on a yacht as we speak. Uh, so, I think we can probably all agree that James Hype has made it right. Um, so... Uh, DJ John Roback says, Hi Phil, I noticed when I started using Serato that when you play in the red, the music breaks up. So I always keep it in the green and it always sounds great. You know, a lot of DJ software has something called a limiter on it and a limiter will stop it getting that horrible digital distortion, but it also will degrade the sound quality in a way that wouldn't happen if you didn't push it that hard. So it's kind of like, it's put there to stop DJs sounding absolutely terrible when they go into the red, but you still won't sound very good. Um, so... Okay, so I'm just scrolling through the uh, I'm just scrolling through the uh, questions. Uh, James says it was interesting to know about the not playing for free, but I want to DJ at weddings, not clubs. Uh, how would you recommend to break into that scene? Unfortunately, the one pound tip applies to weddings with next time payment, as I imagine they're not going to get married again. Look, if you're a wedding DJ, to start with, it's the biggest night, day of their lives. Certainly, it's the biggest day of the bride's li uh, life. <laughs> Um, it's the biggest day of their lives and they've got a budget. This isn't like a, a normal DJ gig. They've got a budget. They sat down and they said, how much are we going to spend on our wedding? They've got a number in their head for all the things they're going to buy for their wedding. They are not expecting any of those services to come for free. And so your job is not to, you know, expect to do it for free. Your job is to convince them that a large sum of that money should go on the DJ. So with a wedding, you are automatically a professional when you're playing at a wedding, automatically. And what's more, you can double your normal fee because it's a wedding. Who's got married and realized that the same flowers, the same everything suddenly costs double because the word wedding is involved, right? So with weddings, you're automatically, automatically a professional. Uh, and the way to break into that scene is to, um, Make everything about how you appear professional, even before you've played the first gig. You need great gear, you need great photography, you need a great website, you need a great um, way of dealing with people who inquire about your services, you need good marketing, you need all that stuff to be in place, and then you need to ensure that you can do a good job. And so if you want to play weddings and you haven't played a wedding before, you'd be damn well better make sure you're a good enough DJ anyway, because going from beginner to wedding DJ is something that is not advisable. You know, uh, if you want to play weddings, then play some other mobile gigs that are a little bit less high stakes first. Um, and if you're already a DJ, but you're just not big on the wedding scene, you know, shadow a wedding DJ. Get a local wedding DJ or someone who's maybe not your direct competition, maybe in the next town, uh, to allow you to go and be their helper for a season. So you learn how to do it. Maybe you'll end up being given the decks while they go off and do something else for an hour here and there. So, you know, so you've got to know you can do the job and you've got to look the part in every way, presentation, and you've got to have everything in place so that your first wedding booking is handled as professionally as your hundredth. And then you charge the same money that you would charge for your hundredth booking. Um, you know, we could talk for a long time about this. We've got a whole course on wedding DJing, but basically you're already a pro. So don't do that for a dollar. Um, so, right, more of your live um, questions. 
Uh, so this is from uh, DJ Pac-Man who says, I'm, I'm open to playing a dance club, but I don't have a lot of experience playing at a club yet. We'll start playing at bars and lounges and so on. I played at bars and lounges long, long, long before I played my, my club gigs. Uh, and uh, I remember, you know, I used to play maybe five nights a week back in the day. Uh, and then it was like four nights in a bar, one night in a club. And I said, I want to get to the point where there's no bars and it's all clubs. And that was going to be my next step on my DJing evolution. And it happened, but it took maybe two or three more years to do that. So don't think it's going to happen straight away, uh, but just set yourself little steps. Uh, but again, you know, you're not going to go from beginner to club gigs. Like you're not going to go from beginner to wedding gigs. That's like going from zero to full speed. You've got to take the little steps along the way. Um, so techno beats agreeing that fewer effects are definitely more uh, and it's there to emphasize or cut a track not just to throw in randomly. I totally agree with you. Uh, thank you Geo Bro and it's good to see you as well after a very long time. We, we're still here. We're still here. Uh, what should I do to get the book says Epi. Uh, you get the book by going to that link and buying, uh, sorry, and downloading it. We'll give you a free download link there. Uh, that said, uh, we will also, um, you can't see that link, can you? There you go, you can now. Uh, that said, um, you can buy it, of course. It's on Amazon. You can buy the audio book. You can buy this version. You can buy it in bookshops. Uh, and you can also get it for Kindle. So there's lots of places to get your hands on the book. Um, so um, Alan says, well said, Phil. Uh, I'm like this when I'm driving and father is talking in the cars. I don't perform as well. And I believe mixing two vocals will be similar as you're not able to perform well. My wife doesn't let me talk when I'm driving the car. She thinks I need to put all my effort into driving the car and that I can't talk to her and listen to what she's saying back when I'm driving. Uh, my wife is wrong on that score. I certainly can. However, I do sympathise with her because I don't like being a passenger in a car either. Um, so um, so uh, let's pull out some more of your comments here. Um, I'm just looking for something that's a little bit different. Alan's saying red light, redlining also damages speakers as well by sending a square wave signal. It certainly will if you haven't got a DSP in your speakers that's kind of like trying to prevent that damage for you. But however, doesn't matter if that's happening or not, you are going to sound ter terrible. Uh, this is a good one, actually, and this wasn't included, but it's true. Uh, rule number one, says Weasel22, make sure you're having fun. Enjoy your own music and spin like you want to hear it. You know, this is for DJs of all beginner, experience, whatever. You know, so many DJs. DJing is about transferring energy from you to the dance floor, right? But a lot of DJs, what you see them doing is transferring boredom. And with beginner DJs, you quite often see them transferring utterly petrified. But transferring an utterly petrified feeling to the dance floor as a beginner is as bad as transferring a I'm bored and I don't want to be here dance floor uh, feeling to the dance floor as a pro. They're not good enough. And I think you're quite right there, Weasel22. Make sure you're having fun and make sure you're enjoying the music because if you're not doing that, what's the point of it? How can you expect anyone else to be enjoying it uh, if that's the case? Um, so you don't like my music is being very honest, saying, frankly, I'm not good enough to wing it. I always stick to my playlist. That's all right. Make it the next step in your evolution as a DJ to take more music than you think you're going to need in a playlist and don't play it all right? Then you're starting to get to the point where you are playing with it a bit uh, and you'll get there. You'll get there. But thank you for being honest about that. You're not the only one. Like I shared with you, I did that as well back in the day. And, you know, I think probably all DJs will do that at some point, follow a playlist. Um, so this is a off uh, topic question, but I will quickly answer it because it's a common one. Uh, fast question about the James Hype course says, says Acid. Uh, does it show James using the record box library, playlisting, organizing, tagging? Yes, there's a whole module about how James buys, organizes, and prepares his music. And yes, it shows record box doing that. We actually posted a video uh, of James on the website uh, in the last uh, few minutes, actually. James Hype plays insane set on lowly Pioneer DDJ 400. People, I've got to say, if you've not seen this, go and look at it on Digital DJ Tips. It's got 100,000 views already this video on YouTube of James playing uh, and he's literally playing I've just started it playing there 107,000 views already on that video of James that he posted just a few days ago uh, it's absolutely brilliant it's showing that it's not about the gear it's about the skills so if you've ever thought oh better DJ gear would make me a better DJ just go and watch that it's awesome uh, right I whoops 
I went off topic there, so sorry about that. Um, so apparently I quoted Bob Marley. I'd love to know what I said that Bob Marley said, uh, but uh, I'm in good company if I did quote Bob Marley. Um, so you don't like my music, says it's all about the blend, finding two tracks that complement each other and make each track sound better. It is, but I would say that that is trumped by playing the right music for the people in front of you right now. Uh, it really is. If you get a better idea for what to play next because you just know the crowd in front of you are going to love it, play it. Figure out the mix along the way. Um, so um, Phil Defunk says that that's a bad tip. There's nothing wrong with just mixing songs. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's not an awful lot right with it if you're not playing the right songs for the people in front of you right now. No one goes home saying, uh, oh, that DJ mixed every song really well tonight. What a great night. They do go home saying, uh, what an amazing night. That DJ played really, really great music. It's much better to be simpler in your mixing and playing the right music than it is to be wrong in your tune selection just so you can mix all the tunes together. You don't need to mix every tune together. You have to get your timing right so the dancers don't kind of fall off their podiums because your beats are clashing or you've just mis misrepresented the bars and the measures and the beats and the sections. You've got to get your timing right, but you do not have to beat mix everything. And some of the best DJs in the world beat mix very rarely nowadays. So I, with the greatest respect, Phil Funk, I don't think that's a bad tip at all. And I think um, maybe you misunderstood what the tip was trying to get at there. But thank you for your feedback. Um, lots of you are asking basic questions, and that's great because this is a beginner lesson. Um, but, you know, questions like how do you choose the right song? I'll just push you again to buying the book because we cover gear, music, techniques, playing out. And in the playing out section, we talk about choosing the right song and promoting yourself. The five big steps of DJing in here. And there's a section in the book about doing just that. So do go grab the book. And again, join Digital DJ Tips. You get the book for free when you join. djtips.co slash join. Um, so um, apparently there's another volcano going off now in Italy. Uh, so wow, it's volcano season, isn't it? Let's hope that there's a. Let's hope that they're prepared for that one over there. Uh, I will be as a news junkie. I'll be checking the news straight after we go off the air here in a few minutes. Now we are in the last two or three minutes here now. Um, so YouTube rips. Alan agrees are not the best quality. Beatport Link costs thirteen pounds a month, and you get all the music you need from those services. So there you go. And yes, Master James, charging one dollar is absolutely fine because if you think about it. Uh, you charge a dollar, but you tell him it's $200 next time. Well, you've just played two gigs for a, for $100.50 a gig. I'll take that. Um, it's just getting used to the idea of charging something. And uh, I, hope, I hope I talked you through, uh, you know, how that works. Tibor agrees, says, yep, that's smart self-marketing. Self uh, self uh, right, just one or two more live comments here. Uh, mix the music you play, don't play the music you can mix. Nigel, I've not, not seen it said better anywhere. I'm going to screen grab that right now, and I'll probably <clears throat> be repeating that in the future. So thank you for that, Nigel. Uh, so uh, it's also worth mentioning, and yes, this is actually the tip I'm going to end on. Thank you for this one. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself. Most people don't notice the little mistakes we make or the great lengths you went to to put two songs together. Uh, just make sure it sounds good. Thank you very much for that, Aguilermo. You're completely right. You know, when we do it brilliantly, most people don't mention, uh, most people don't notice. When we mess up, most people don't notice. It's true, you know, I heard a chef on TV saying, you know, sometimes I wonder why we do what we do because most people haven't got a clue what, what effort went into that meal we just put in front of them. And if we've really messed up a meal and we're really scared about sending it out, most people don't notice that either. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good point. Most, you know, the only person concentrating as hard on your DJing as you are uh, is other DJs in the room. And another rule of DJing is don't play to other DJs, play to the crowd. That is another one that we could have added here. Don't play to other DJs, play to the crowd. In fact, I think I might add it to it. Uh, in fact, I think I might start making a list based upon the comments here of things we didn't put in part one and I'll write a part two. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone else uh, who's been, uh, who's been uh, adding comments here. You've certainly given me some stuff that I didn't, I didn't think of before as well. 
as I always say, I learn as much from these as hopefully you learn from us. People, we're done now. I'm back on Thursday with Thursday Q&A live, and that is when it's all over to you. Uh, you guide the questions. You can ask anything you want on Thursday. So if your question hasn't been answered here because it was a bit off topic, or, or we just didn't get time to get to it, come back on Thursday. Uh, remember, you can watch the full replay of this on YouTube and on Facebook. The best place to ask questions on all of these is on Facebook because they live afterwards and my team will then try and get to you on Facebook. Uh, and uh, if you want that link one more time, djtips.co slash join. That's the place to go to grab your copy of this, become our latest member uh, and to join the Digital DJ Tips community. Uh, thank you to everyone who is uh, saying thanks down there in the comments. Uh, and it's, um, look at that. Don't play under the influence of both alcohol and drugs. I love it. I'm going to literally, I'm going to take a piece of paper and write a new list now. So let's, before we go, let's share that list. Other tips for beginner DJs. Put them down there now. Type, type, type. Uh, and I will write them down as we speak. Uh, no drugs or alcohol. You can, I, I spoke to a big DJ once who said to me once, you know, you can go down the drugs and alcohol route or you can go down the music route. And I've gone down the music route and that's why I'm still playing after 30 years. Uh, we had no drugs and alcohol. We had make sure you're enjoying yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. I love these. Uh, what else did we say, people? Don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, come on, type, type, type. You could get them included in, uh, in, the, uh, in the new list, in the part two that I'm going to be including. And there were one or two others. I'm scrolling up now to see some more pro tips. Um, uh, I love that one from DJ Ginormous. The only people who've had their song played next to the one who handed me a $100 bill. Don't play every request. I just thought of that one. Um, and also, don't always ignore requests. If you're having a hard gig, Sometimes it's a good idea to listen to the people who are asking for tracks because sometimes they could get you out of a hole. Um, so, you know, people don't hear your great mixes and they don't hear your mess ups either. Uh, that was another one, wasn't it? That kind of goes with don't be too hard on yourself. Um, people don't hear your triumphs or your, or your disasters as much as you think. Um, I can split those two out. Come on, people, your chance to be involved uh, here. Uh, final chance to type something in that chat box. Um, I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if we can get to 10 uh, new ones. Uh, so, um, oh, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time, was a Bob Marley quote, apparently. Uh, so that is, uh, that is cool. Uh, I'm scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. Uh, and to see any more of your tips that you've shared. Uh, have fun, but don't overdo it, says Ian. Uh, so yeah, that could, be, um, that could be a good one. So I could tie that in with the um, make sure you have fun, but don't overdo it. I, I know what you're saying there. You know, it, it kind of ties in with the drink and drugs one as well. You get DJs, party animal DJs who can't DJ because they're partying too much, I guess. Um, apparently my wife's not watching the stream. She, she might be. We've got a very honest relationship, my wife and I. That was back to the comment about uh, her not letting me talk when we're driving, wasn't it? Um, so Daniel just says, uh, I just want to say a big thank you for these. They've really helped me improve as a DJ. Well, thank you very much for that, Daniel. Um, so, um, right, I'm just going to, um, I'm literally looking at all your old, uh, looking at all your old um, comments. Mark says, I'd, one of you says, a lot of money has been spent on your DJ corner. And someone else says, can you get out of there? It looks like you're sat in a coffin. Uh, I, I love the DJ corner. Have you noticed how lovely the audio is? How dead, how lacking in reverb? That's because we are in a very small room deliberately, a very small studio. Uh, so, um, so our last two or three, love, the, love and know the music you, you, you play. I love that. Love and know the music you play. I guess that comes down to, um, you know, thinking about your playlist and not having massive amounts of music, but love and know the music you play. Uh, have a panic button for mistakes. I love that. Have a panic button for mistakes. I think um, having a plan B as well. So your panic button could be like literally a, a sound effect you play, but it could be a track always lined up on a spare deck. Uh, have a panic button for mistakes. Uh, and also um, have a plan B. Uh, have a, uh, you know, say everything goes down, what are you going to do? Say all the music goes off, what are you going to do? Uh, so have a plan B. I like that. Um, uh, Check you, check you empty your bladder before. I'm gonna have to start. Look, I'm gonna have to start a new page now. Um, empty your bladder before DJing. Uh, I love that one. That's a cool one. Empty your bladder before DJing. Um, 
this is a serious one from the House Music, the House Music Chronicles. Um, you know, if you're in the United States, have a real career with a pension fund. And that's true. You know, if you choose to, to head out alone, be professional about it. Try and get yourself back to a point where you've got the things that are necessary for a long term career. Um, you know, we're going from the, the almost the trivial to the real life stuff, aren't we here? You know, I'm writing down empty your bladder before DJing and being told, you know, make sure you've got a pension or you're paying for you're paying for your social security. Um, I'm loving this. Um, Use smart playlists. I love that. Use smart playlists. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's advanced uh, to start thinking about smart playlists. Um, so um, lots and lots of advice here, which is just good advice, but it's not kind of beginner advice that pro DJs uh, don't make, which is what I'm looking for. Acknowledge your crowd sometimes. Yeah, I love, I love that. You know, beginner DJs with all the best intentions, don't always look up because they're so scared and they don't want to look up in case everyone's like going, no. Um, and, you know, for all those reasons, uh, they sometimes don't acknowledge the crowd. Uh, and so I agree, acknowledging the crowd is a great idea. Um, and uh, I think we're probably good enough there. I think we've probably got... Uh, We've got uh, all the ones that you've been suggesting written down now. Uh, and when we've got people like Terry saying, don't fart in the DJ box, I think we've probably got to the point where we're done here, haven't we, people? Uh, but thank you very, very much um, for all your comments and all your... Um, look, I've got part two written down there. Thank you, people. Uh, part two will be coming to Tuesday Tips Live very, very soon. Uh, but now it's time for me to say... Uh, <laughs> my team down in the chat. I don't know if you noticed earlier. I, I cut to uh, I cut to the um, uh, the wrong thing. What what I cut to was our internal chat system, uh, which is our kind of secret weapon here at Digital DJ Tips. It keeps the whole company gelled together, even though we're all over the world. Uh, but also, it's always going live. It's like a producer talking in your ear. It's always going live in the bottom corner when I'm doing these lives, uh, and they're saying. Uh, uh, pure gold today. It's a splinterthon, Lauren. Lauren does our social media. Uh, so, yes, a splinterthon means that Lauren can take, oh, wrong camera again. Lauren can take all these little clips where I'm sharing all these tips, and you guys and girls are delivering tips, and I'm sharing those as well, and put them as those tiny little things on Instagram and stuff that you have know, little looped videos that you see or include them in stories and stuff. It is indeed a splinterthon, uh, and there's lots and lots of content here that you'll be seeing on our socials, no doubt, for the next week or so. So thank you for being part of it all. Uh, right, I am out of here now. So get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you on Thursday. Until then, bye-bye.